Good morning gamers and in today's video we are going to be having a look at what is actually stronger, a dry Tsukamimus or a wet Tsukamimus. <laughs> so let me just quickly get how this video is going to work out the way with. I'm going to be putting them against a 4 slot herbivore, this is a Margasaurus I'm going to be using just as a baseline, you know it's not an actual fight or anything, I just want to see who would actually do the most damage towards it, have more speed than it, and who would in general fare better against an Amargosaurus? Would a dry Suko be better, or a wet Suko? So, I'm going to be going through Amargus stats quickly as a baseline, then I'm going to go through either one of a dry or a wet Suko, one of them, and then the other. So hopefully that's nice and clear, and just a little FYI, there's a fancy little website called GSH, if you just type in on Google GSH Path of Titans, you're able to find every stat of, you know, health, damage, and all that on the attacks of every Path of Titans dinosaur, modded, vanilla, whatever. So that's what I'm going to be using, it's, you know, it's very up to date and it has every stat that I need. So that is going to be the start of today's video, and yeah, let's get straight into this. Alright, so, I've spawned in on a Margasaurus. Now, the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be using a Marga's max speed, max health, max combat weight, and its stamina, and I'm pretty sure that's all I'll need. Oh, and also the damage on the headbutt and tail, since I'll be using those for comparison in terms of damage. And when it comes to these stats, I have got them in-game. So, the fastest run speed it has is 615. That's as fast as a Marga goes. Its max health is 1000, max stamina is 100, and the combat weight is 4650. Now, that isn't everything, because the headbutt, this attack, does 40 damage. And the tail attack, surprisingly, does 60 damage. So those are the two attacks the Amaga's gonna have. I know it's got a stomp and stuff, but I'm only gonna be using two attacks for Amaga, mainly because they're spammable and they're much easier to do in this scenario. So the way the scenario is gonna be is just like trading one for one hits with attacks. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Don't worry, I'll be fine. And yeah, now let's get on to Sukamimus because we have got some fun stuff to look at there. Okay, so, I've spawned an Onsuko. By the way, for the purpose of this to make it fair, because there is a wet sub that does damage, and then a dry sub which only does venom and bleed healing, I'm not going to use subs for this, mainly because I want it to be completely fair, and I want to mainly do it based on abilities. I might factor in the sub later as, like, a what-if, but for now I'm just going to use the default of, well not the default, but this 10% stamina recovery. The Amaga subspecies I didn't go over, but it's the tail attack knockback one. Just So it's nice, fair, all easy, and you know, it's base stats as best as I can. Anyway, so for the first Zuko build, we're going to be testing out the dry one. So let's have a look at all the abilities which are for dryness. That would be the default bite. Then we have... Shed Teeth, uh, Chlorotech, uh, No Metabolism, Parch Scales, and then Strong Legs or Brace Legs, because both of them are for dry. Tail Attack, and for the voice, that would be Scalding Rage, because rapidly dry off. <laughs> so this is our Sukumimus' land build. Now, we already have some funny stuff going on here, because this this hide gives us more health, gives, gives us more stamina, makes us sprint faster, and we dry out quicker. So I'm going to get back with all of Suko's stats, and yeah, we will see how this actually is. Okay, so I've done some, done some commands and stuff. Right, so these ones just here that you can see in my chat, character move character dot max run speed 950 and then max health 700 stamina 100 combat weight 5000 they are sukumimus default i just wanted them as for comparison so we could see so they're the default and our dry build suko has the same amount of speed 800 health 100 stamina and 4000 combat weight so it lost a thousand combat weight but it gained 100 health the bite also does 65 because we're taking this in a scenario where it's completely dry. The claw does 30 because again, 
normally it will do 15, the bite would normally do 32, but you know, they get 100%, which is double, and the claw also does 0.25 bleed. So that is the dry build Suko. In terms of, you know, damage, I don't know, I haven't compared it to the wet one, but this is pretty good actually. As well as the fact that these attacks it has, the cooldowns are not long at all. They are incredibly short, one second cooldowns. And yeah, I, I did think this hide would make Suko quicker. Because they've also changed it since release. It used to only take away like 650 combat weight. Now it takes away a thousand. And you also don't sprint quicker. Which doesn't make any sense, but... I guess Elderon's changed some stuff. They kind of nerfed this hide a lot, and it's not worth it. So that might be the downfall of the Suko. And in terms of fighting Amaga, well, let's go back up in the chat. So Amaga is much slower, like three, over 300 units slower. Yikes! Uh, it's got 200 more health, same stamina, and it ends up with 650 more combat weight. But in terms of damage, Suko still would do more damage to the Amaga, and considering this thing has good attack speed, in a straight up face tank, or even getting hit by the tail a few times, I'm pretty sure the Suko would win. It would have to get behind that combat weight and extra health, but I'm pretty sure the Suko could do it. So now that we've got the dry Suko as a possible ding ding ding, yes, it could do it, I want to go have a look at the wet Suko. Would that fare better? I also would like to see their stats against each other, just to see what is stronger, the dry one or the wet one, as like if they got into a fight with each other. So let's go have a look at the wet Suko Mimus build. Alrighty, so the abilities we want to use for the water build Suko is Riptide, because it does up to 20% more damage, which is pretty good. Uh, Nictating Membrane, because it's just easier to see. Claw Barrage, because again, it does 15% more damage to wet targets. Waterlogged Hide, so we can have more swim stuff. Dry out slower on land, so it keeps us wet for more. And we also get to deal with uh, clamped, target, uh, clamped and grab targets. I don't know why it says clamped, but... La oh, wait, no. If something grabs us, ah, that makes sense. Right, so grabbed and pounces, they, you know, their stamina gets drained. Strong legs again, tail attack again because the lunge is useless, because this is a comparison with an Amaga on land. And wet water spout, so we can actually get the Amaga wet, so Suko can do more, you know, more stuff like that. So that's the build for the Suko. Now, let's see how it fares in terms of stats. Okay, so I have just done some very complicated math, and I'm pretty sure I don't have it right, but I've tried my best, okay? So, this Riptide Bite, first of all, it does 20% more damage max to a wet target if I'm also wet, but it also does 10% more damage per hit, and I'm pretty sure it only stacks up to 4, because it might work like Claw Barrage, I'm just gonna guess by that. So, that would mean that each bite it's doing 10% more than the last bite it just did with Riptide, which is freaking insane! Uh, the same thing is for Claw Barrage, except it's only 15% more damage to wet targets. However, this one has a higher default bite damage, since let's have a look at these properties. So the speed is exactly the same, 950. H health is down 100 to 700 max. Stamina is the same. Combat weight is up 1000 to 5000. And let's have a look at these damages. So. Yeah, Riptide does 20 normally, plus a 20% for being wet and hitting something that's wet, which makes it 24. And then the max stack on the bite is 32. Like, that's the it, that's the most damage the bite does, but all four bites is 110. And then the Claw Barrage does 30 on its own, plus the 15%, that's 34.5. And the max damage it does in a single hit is 67.825. But then all four of these hits, the bam, 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 all four of those, they total to 199, so just under 200, which is insane. So, you know, I don't know if they're wrong, you know, I, I just went by what the abilities say and I did the math as you normally would, and these damage numbers are insane. However, there is one issue, the animation length and the actual cooldown. Let me show you. So, 
yeah, you see that long animation, then a two second cooldown. And then you also have this bite. Long cooldown and a six second anime. Uh, sorry, a long animation and a six second cooldown. Which is half because I'm wet, normally it's 12. Um, so, yeah, this thing does insane damage. Like, that's insane. This is this is without the 5% damage sub. I'm not even gonna add that, just to be fair, because that's broken. But, the animation length and the cooldowns kind of bounce it out. So in terms of an actual fight, I'm pretty sure this thing would beat the Amaga, simply because it weighs more. It is missing 300 health, but the damage it can do, it can run in, deal that damage, run out, and yeah, it's it can just do that a lot. Now obviously it would have to, you know, do the water spout to actually get the Amago wet first, but once it's done that, it can basically go in, and as long as you avoid getting hit, you know, if it was a trade one for one, and you know, they waited until the other person attacked, this Suko would have it in the bag. Obviously the Amago attacks faster, you know, it's, it can just do more DPS. I'm pretty sure the Amaga would win a face tank, but in an actual fight, I'm not sure if this would do better than the dry one. It might do more damage, but you also have to remember you have to hit all those hits and not miss. And the amount of temp, the amount of time I would have to be hitting the Amaga whilst doing this. It can get like three headbutts, which is 120 damage on me, which is a little bit less than 100. And, oh no, sorry. For the claw barrage, that's 200. So it does a little bit less than the claw barrage. But for this bite, by the time I can do that again, that Amaga can hit me a good seven times. I'm guaranteeing at least, maybe not seven, maybe maybe more like five, which would, you know, five times 40. You can do the math. That's more than 110. <laughs> That's, that's 200, which is about as much as the Barrage. So, in terms of which one's stronger, if it was just a trade-off or a one-to-one -one fight, this thing would decimate. This thing would beat the Dry Suko, it does way more damage. It would beat the Amaga, which was just, like, it was just a tough four slot, which, because I'm pretty sure it's a four slot now. It's just a tough four slot that I was like, you know, we can use this as a base measurement. But I did not expect these damages. You know, I understood the buffs were insane, but holy Jesus, doing 200 attack on a claw barrage, and then 110 on the bite, which I don't get why the bite does less, like nearly half, despite it being a longer cooldown. Maybe it's because of the reach? I'm not sure. Uh, I will also mention the Dry Suko build does, you know, it does have some bleed, but I'm not going to factor in the bleed damage because... That is just a pain. But if we compare the cooldowns of the bite to this claw attack, and then I'll also compare them, you know, the other bite to the other claw. Let's just do one of these. One, two, three, four. And then by the time that we've even finished that bite, we can get maybe four of these, which, you know, at max that's 30. So 30 times four, 120. We can do more than that bite, just with the maximum dry. So that's already the claw winning. Now if we go to the claw barrage and the bite, by the way, I'm not using these two bites because like, they're not really based on dr on land and wet. You know, they don't really increase in damage. They're more like bleed and, I mean, this one's damage, but I, I, I read my comments on my Suko TLC and people were saying how I got that thing wrong. And I was like, yeah, maybe I did. Alderon doesn't word things properly. It might be the same case of this video. But let's have a look at this claw barrage. One, two, three, and then the two second cooldown. I can do one, one, two, three, maybe get four bites in there, which, you know, each one is 65. Four times 65. That's not bad. So I'm going to say the dry build, however, I just realized it does, it does less damage than normal because of the combat weight difference. So... Ooh, that's closer than I think, actually. I think in a face tank, though, the dry build would win. It'd be very close, though. But it's got the extra health. The 1,000 combat weight isn't too much of a difference. You know, it might take away, like... I'm just gonna take a guess here. Maybe it adds 10 to the other and takes 10 from this one in terms of total damage from each attack. I don't know. But... 
I'm trying to guess and it's not going well. <laughs> I'm mainly doing this video because someone wanted it and, you know, since Suko's been out and not many people have done meth stuff with Suko, I thought I'd give it a try. Alright, so, I swap back onto the Marga because I'm, I'm doing my outro, you know, I, we've been Suko for way too long. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it hasn't been the most entertaining with no combat or anything, but I really did just want to thoroughly go through Suko to see what build would actually be better. And, you know, we came to a conclusion, trading one-to-one, -one, wet Suko is stronger. Actual fight? Probably the dry Suko. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was, it was definitely fun making it. And, yeah, that's basically it, you know? <laughs> If you guys have enjoyed it, make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you feel like it. I always love reading them. Have a wonderful day, make sure to take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.